Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Hot Air. Thank you once again for joining us and also thank you for being patient with us. I think it's been 12, 13 days since we last put a video out. There are a few excuses as to why we haven't put any out. Uh, namely the first one, there was an issue with the camera on the last episode. The quality of the picture was not great, it was really grainy. It didn't show up when we was editing the video, but then obviously as it's gone live to YouTube there was obviously a, a problem there, so I apologise. And also the weather has been horrendous, there's been a couple of storms kicking about and we've had a couple of power outages in the shop. So it's meant that trying to tie in my diary with Gareth's diary, running the shop, Gareth's job and obviously the, the weather and being... The range. Yeah, and the range as well, yeah. So we've been very busy and we've been trying to get stuff done, so I apologise that it's... It's taken as long as it has. Deeper stack as Wales, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so apologies. We are back, and we are back to doing, hopefully, one a week, unless other things crop up. But for now, we're back to normal. Um, yeah, so today's episode, we're going to talk about the Pulsar, the Digit C50. We said in the last week's video that we was going to do uh, a comparison table between kind of four of the top digital scopes. Uh, or day night scopes, however you know them. So the first one last week was the Ark and Zulus that we both really impressed with, weren't we? Well, yeah. I, well, so I much you bought one. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, and there's been so much like controversy in in on the forums and everything about that scope. It's unbelievable. People have been people have been taking it and, and trying to use it in competition. Yeah. Um, Which is bizarre, isn't it? Because it. It's a bit naughty, isn't it? It's yeah, it's not going to happen, guys. You know it's not going to happen. That's, you know, that's the height of cheating. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like getting the stick to drive a car for you in a race. It's just not, it's just not, not the dumb thing, is it? No. So, um, I think someone commented and said, you either all have them or none of us have them, um, which is, I can see where they're going with that, but then we kind of have like a zoom loose a competition of its own isn't it? I kind of get it for the HFT guys because you're trying to recreate you're trying to simulate hunting, hunting. Yeah. so I kind of get why you would want to incorporate it to a certain degree but then I think the like 20 times zoom or whatever it is I think it's just it takes the skill out of it a little bit I'm not saying that it's not skillful doing it with 20 times zoom I'm just saying it's the, it's the ballistic calculator that yeah, takes I the think, skill out of it yeah, I think there's a couple of bits in there that make it a little bit cheaty anyway so so basically the the standard scopes are not going to go out of any fashion right now. But no. the, the, for field target HFT, come on guys, we're using proper scopes. Um, not none of these. That these are literally going to be an aid really for hunting. It's just making hunting so much more accessible. We've had a good fun with the other one, haven't we? Yeah. So as um, we said um, in last week's video, we've not been able to get one out in the field. Um, for obvious reasons, like I say, it wasn't <coughs> our demo one, it was one that we'd just been sent as a as a quick stopgap, if you will, just so we could do the video. But I have asked for that scope to come back at a later date, obviously when they finish with like the shooting shows and stuff, just so we can get it and have a play with it and actually do some out in the field testing. Um Well this one you know inside out, don't you? Yeah, so this, this is, is this is my scope. Yeah, so um big big advocate of pulsar stuff. I think they make fantastic stuff. They've been the front runner for a long, long time. Made some fantastic scopes, whether that be day night digital scopes or whether that be the thermal scopes that they come out with. Um, it's almost really, sort of military grade, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, I've been really good. Every knob, yeah, guys. so when I put it back on my rifle, it's going to be all over the show. <laughs> it won't because it's turned off, so you can literally turn everything and there's no, there's no arm, no fart. It doesn't do anything unless it's turned on, unless he's left it turned on and he's just trying to stitch me up. Um, so, yeah, so last week we said obviously what came with the Ark and, and what you got for your, your purchase, if you like. The one thing I love about the Pulsar stuff is that when you open your box and you get your bag, it always comes in like a little nice <coughs> leather hold all. Um, this one comes with two batteries, a uh, battery charger, it comes with a magnetic eye cup that clips off and then pings back on. Really, really fantastic to use, really easy to use, dead easy to set up. Um, is the um, is the batteries, them 18650s, the same as. Yeah, so you get two of those, you get your charger, and more. Is the charger capable of charging both at the same yeah, time? Yeah, it's a twin portal. Yeah. So you literally get a cradle with two little slots in, you put them in there, you get additional turrets. If you want to extend your turrets up, if you want to make it look more bulky, you can do, or if you want to put a bigger battery in, you can do. Um, everything's controlled off the side. There's a little side button here, and obviously you twist and you go through your menus, and then you power on, you record, and your zoom button is on the side. 
really really easy to use really straightforward um, and we have done a bit of a comparison on this one as I said at the board you'll notice the grid there behind Gareth's head so we'll go to that in a second but first before we can do this we have to talk about the arcing because it wouldn't be fair to grade one without grading the other so we're going to jump over to the whiteboard, aren't we? Yes. And we're going to grade the Arkan first. So we'll do yeah, that guys, now. As you've just heard there, we're going to do a bit of a comparison across uh, four or five different day-night digital scopes. Um, last week's episode, obviously, we spoke about the Arkan Zulus. And this week, we're going to talk about the Pulsar Digix C50. Um, but before we can talk about the Pulsar, what I wanted to do was just do a little bit of a, a grid and basically do five different categories of scoring, if you like. One being excellent... Two being good, three being poor, four being very poor. Now, when I say poor and very poor, I don't mean the scope's poor. I mean in terms of its price overall. Um, so, yes, maybe like if it's a, a three and it's poor, what, I, what I'm actually saying is your value for money. Yeah. Uh, so the way we're going to grade the scopes, if you like, obviously the price is important to a lot of people. What are you actually paying for it and how does it, um, how does it tally amongst or rather versus the other scopes what you get in the box so what you're physically getting with the scope as part of your purchase the overall build quality of the the scope that you're buying the ease of use so how easy to go into the menus how easy to to do zeroing and stuff uh, and then finally in the field so how does it perform out and about when you try and do a bit of pest controlling with it or what have you and then a total tally so the way we're going to do it is say the Arkan Zulus gets a one a three, a two, a one, and a four. Its total will be a a tally of all those scores, and that's how your total works. Yeah, I don't know why I explained that, but I thought I would. Anyway, so yeah, the Arkan Zulus. So, in terms of a, a scoring metric, I would say out of all of them we've done so far, the Arkan Zulus has to be rated number one. Um, so they start at four five nine, I think it is for the non laser rangefinder one, and they go up to five nine nine with the laser rangefinder. So for that money, I don't think you're going to get much better than that for that sort of price. So for that reason, that gets number one in the first box. Number two, what's in the box? So you get your scope, you get your cable, your USB cable, you get a booklet, and you get your MOA rail. Uh, the downside to it is you don't get a battery. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to give it a two, just because I think overall... You get enough. I do like the fact it comes with a, a hard copy, a brochure, something for you to physically sit down and read. But unfortunately, it doesn't come with a battery, so it's not like you can take it straight out of the box and it's ready to use straight away. Um, build quality, very, very good. As we said on last week's episode, we showed the scope up close and personal. Uh, the build quality feels phenomenal. Something that only weighs, I think it's 587 grams, so just less than a 600 grams. It, it's very, very well put together. Very, very good build quality. And as it's the only one we've got up to now, I'm going to grade that a 1 as well, because I think the build quality is fantastic. Um, ease of use is the fourth category that we've looked at. Now, ease of use, uh, for someone who's used to shooting with day-night scopes, I think you'll find it's very, very simple. It's a very, very easy thing to do. The menus are really easy to navigate. Maybe the only slight downside is that you've got to go through different buttons. You've got to cycle between your power button to freeze the frame, and then your settings button in your left and right to move your reticles up and down. I had a chap in here today, he's just bought one, and he came and said, can you give me a hand, zero it for it. I found it dead easy, he couldn't get to grips with it. But once I talked to him through it, and he understood it from a, a user's point of view, I think he went away and he was quite happy with it, so that was that was really, really good. Um, so for me, ease of use, again, it's probably not the easiest one to use, but I do think it's fairly simple, so for that reason, I'm going to give it a two. Um, in the field... I haven't been able to actually take one out into the field yet, and neither has Gareth. Um, we had it off Optics Warehouse, as we said last week, but unfortunately they needed it back because they were going doing some um, trade shows, so obviously they needed their demo models back to go and put on display, which is absolutely fine. But I have spoke to the guys at Optics Warehouse, and they have said they will send us another one, so we can grade that one. Obviously not in this week's episode, but we will in time, we will grade that. Um, yeah, there are loads of videos of people taking them out and doing bits and pieces in the field with them. So I think that, obviously, go and check them out anyway, but we will do our own. So for now, we'll leave that one blank, and then, obviously, when we get some footage of it, we'll come back, we'll put it on, and we can grade it fairly across all those categories. Yeah, so that was the Zulus, guys. Like I said, we wanted to do a comparison across three or four of the, the kind of the, the, the best digital night scopes. There are a lot out there, and we've tried picking kind of the, the four best sellers from the shop and also the four that we've had hands-on experience with and thought, 
these are the ones that we think people will be interested to see. So the Arkham scored really, really well on our little grid. Um, fantastic value for money. Um, <coughs> Sorry, fairly Dave. simple to use. Uh, and what you get in the box is, is fairly decent as well. Apart from that um, missing battery, which is a bit annoying, but never mind. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is, like we did last week, I'll do a bit of a close-up of this scope so you can kind of see the general layout of it. And then we'll jump back over to the whiteboard and we'll do the same sort of scoring with this. Yeah, so this is the Pulsar Digix C50. Uh, probably my favourite digital day-night scope. Uh, really easy to use. Three function buttons on the back there. So you power, you record and you zoom. Menu button there with a little press button on the side. Turret there for your battery. Another turret there where your charging port is in for USB. Uh, magnification on the front and then you change from your day to your night. Really nice positive uh, cap and also a magnetic eye cup which is a really nice little feature all in all great scope a little bit heavier than the Zulus um, well a lot heavier than the Zulus to be fair but equally like I say one of my favourites yes that was a close with it guys like I say a, a decent scope an all round scope like I say and it's that good like I say I, I've had a few of them um, we are going to go back over to the whiteboard we're going to go onto the grid we're going to score it based on those categories that we said so we'll do that now and we'll jump over to the whiteboard on the whiteboard yeah guys so as you just heard there that was the uh, Digix C50 from Pulsar lovely lovely bit of kit that is my own personal scope I do use that on one of my deer stalking rifles um, fantastic build quality really really good uh, scopes I do have a, a lot of Love and respect for the Pulsar stuff. I do think it's fantastic. Um, if you can afford to push it, your budget out that far. I do think they are one of the best ones. But we are going to do the same exercise we did with the Arkin on the board. Uh, and we'll grade it and obviously we can we can see which we think is the clear winner. So in terms of price, they start off, I think it's 1030 And then the dearest one uh, is like £1,300. That's one that's got the built-in IR and the Wi-Fi and stuff. So obviously in terms of your price range... The Arkin you can pick up for less than £600. So, depending on what your budget is and how limited your budget is, you might think this is a very poor or a poorly priced. Um, so, I'm going to score that as a three, just in terms of the overall price. What's in the box? Now, with the Pulsar, you do get a hard copy of a how to brochure. You get two batteries, you get a battery charging cradle. Um, you get leads, eye cups, you get everything you would need. The only thing that you don't get with it is scope mounts. Uh, it is a 30 mil tube, so you will need 30 mil um, scope mounts to fit on your rifle. So that is the only downside to it, but everything else you can literally plug straight in and you're away. Uh, so for that, I would give that a one. Build quality, again, I'm going to have to probably say a one for the build quality because the overall standard that Pulsar put out in all their gear is fantastic you know it's really really well made stuff they've been around for a long time and they've kind of been the front runner for a long long time in terms of developing the night vision and also the um thermal imaging stuff so these digital scopes the day night scopes are absolutely phenomenal uh, ease of use in my opinion it's a one i think it's probably one of the easiest to use it is a one shot zero um i tend to do one shot zero and then maybe two or three after just obviously to build confidence just so you know that you are actually 100% where you want to be. Um, the menus are really, really forgiving. They're all on the side button, so you dial and you turn it, so they're really simple to get to. So, yeah, so for me, it's a one on that one. Um, in the field, I do use it all the time, so I'm a little bit biased in terms of in the field. But, again, by the same, same token, sorry, I'm going to leave that one blank just until we've managed to get some footage off the scope. Next time I go stalking or the next time I go out on one of the permissions, I will put an SD card in and I will film it. And then you can actually compare the two lots of video. The one thing that I do think the Pulsar has better than the um, Arkan is that the Pulsar has day, twilight and night vision. So you're getting three different colour contrasts there. And the, when you're in the day and the twilight, there's not really a lot of difference between your colour and your uh, your spectrum of, of colour and stuff. So for me, I think the uh, in the field is going to be a tough one to beat. So that was a uh, that was scoring the pulsar against the uh, Zulu. So obviously, uh, feed for four. And when we get this other two up there, we'll, we'll uh, have a good comparison to try and see which is the best out of the four, or which is the most um, value for money and stuff like that. Uh, which which is what we wanted to try and achieve. 
Um, I think when Gwil mentioned about this one being heavy, he underestimated because this is heavy, guys. But I was always told that if so it's heavy, the more expensive it is, and then this suits the key. This with it being so yeah. expensive, <laughs> I think the thing I like about it, guys, is a little bit heavier. Um, it's not uncomfortably heavy. Like I said, I put this on my 308. I've had it on a 17 HMR. I've also had it on an air rifle. You don't really notice it that well because it is quite well balanced. The weight's evenly distributed, so it does mean that it's it's quite comfortable to put on <coughs> your rifle. Um, and I think the quality you get with your picture and the usability you get outweighs the fact that it is a little bit heavier. No pun people, intended there. A lot of people are shooting off sticks now as well, aren't they? So, That's what I do. I shoot off sticks, whether that be quad stick or um, one with a cradle. <clears throat> um, or off a bipod, so you don't really notice it as much. It's only when you're carrying it you really feel it, but not not to the point where it's uncomfortable. This also has its cheat mode, like we talked about earlier. Um, it has an app that you download, like the other one. Um, it's called Stream Vision Two, and it's available on uh, uh, both Android and Apple. Um, and and that has your ballistic drop calculator as well. And, it, it all works in a very similar way, doesn't it? Yeah, you're really good. And like I said, the thing that I, I always say to everyone who's getting into digital scopes or thermal scopes, whatever, the customer service that you get with Pulsar and the back team that do all the, the bits and the pieces and talking you through and the software that they use is dead easy to, to use. It's dead simple to get on with. And for me, that's why they've been a front runner for as long as they have. There are other companies that are, that are catching up to them. Um, Infrared, Pard certainly are, are getting up there now. Um, Thermtech are going up that way. Like I said, the little Zulus that we had on, so they are all creeping up. <coughs> but for me, like I said, Pulsar has always been the one that has been the, the front runner. Yeah. Hick yeah. Micro. Yeah, so we're going to get this is one that's interesting because it's one that I am very keen to see. It's the Hick uh, Micro and the Alpex, the new one, the 4K one. So when that comes, I think that's that could cause a little bit of upset. I've seen, uh, I couldn't believe it, guys. I don't know where. Um... I'm, I'm an engineer uh, by trade I'm a, a escalation technician so I'm always in and out of um, electrical shops and things like that and I walked into a city electrical factors of all places the other day just to get some bits that I needed and there's a hick micro everywhere in the corner and making thermal uh, yeah. scanning cameras of uh, underground and electrical cables and things like that so they've got a big history of yeah as a company they're massive the stuff they do is, is phenomenal um, they're not new to the game at all, are no. they? So, no, um, really, really good. And like I said, that's one that I'm interested to see because it's one that I have got the old Alpex on my HW100 that we had in the bullpup. So it'd be interesting to see how the new one compares to that with the 4K on it. That was really good as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Fantastic scope. Um, and price-wise, that's going to be in the middle of these two, isn't it? Yeah, it kind of sits between the 600 quid and the 1,000 to 1,300 pound. It's kind of in between. Um, I think they're eight something, nine something. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% certain, but I will have that info when we get the scope. And changing all the time. Yeah. Um, but for now, we hope you like that style of doing the videos, guys, with the grid and kind of cross referencing dis different bits and pieces. And if it is of an interest to you, we'll do it with other stuff. It's just it's something that we wanted to do, didn't we? Yeah, just to, obviously, um, I don't get to shoot much on a day night. I will when, when mine arrives. Um, <laughs> but um, I haven't really been into them that much before. They've transformed like them. I can't wait to start hunting with that one. Um, it's it's going to be a right laugh. Yeah. Uh, but it's um, it's definitely all new to me, and I'm learning every second of this. Um, my, I come from a traditional uh, gun background, and, 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 and all the full bar stuff I'm learning as well. So it's a lot to take in, but it's good fun. Yeah. Um, and, and it's this, it's yes, even if you showed everyone the magnetic cup, did you show that on the close up? Yeah, it clicks, it just it's really nice. The, the, the way it's made, I can't obviously show you down the camera, but the way it goes together, it's just really it's um, it's kind of like the Rolls Royce, isn't it? If you like. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying, it is the top end one. They do come in various different specs. One that comes without an IR and without Wi Fi for those of you that just want the, the basic, and then the one with the Wi Fi and the IR. Um, if you want to do a bit of streaming or you want to do any of the other bits and pieces that you can do with it. So like I said, we hope you like that format and that way of doing it. Um, well, anyway. Let us know if you want any more. Yeah, so... Range. The range, Gareth? Yeah, just, just a quick one, guys. Firstly, on there, that sign, it's wrong now. So it says 62 yard outdoor range. We've kicked it back a bit. It's going out to like 82 yards now. So we're going to have some real fun. Yeah, we managed to pinch <laughs> some yardage. We've managed to push it right out. Um, it is still a 62-yard range. 
It just goes further. It's just another <laughs> 20 yards on the back of it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, loads more fun there. So, we can't wait for that. We've uh, we've got a lot, like Will said, we've had so much going on on the range. Uh, we've got a guy up there with a, a, a digger. Before you knew it, within a day, he had the paths laid out, the car park was flattened, and the progress was fantastic. Yeah, so, Alan, yeah. fair play, mate. He was there... Three days, four days, I think, and the work he did was phenomenal. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, really, really good job. Yeah, really, really good. And the standard of his work is fantastic, so we know that when it is <coughs> completed, the the standard will be will be really high. He's dug um, in some trenches for us for ducting, so we've got facilities coming in like water. Um, we've got to have CCTV and stuff like that everywhere, guys, as you already know, so he's underground cable for them as well. Yeah. Um, we've also got... Um, fence has been going up and down, not intentionally. Yeah, Thanks. thank you, Storm Aisha. Storm Aisha. <laughs> so now they're up and they're very secure. <laughs> yeah, they've been cemented in and steel rotted in and all sorts, so they're not going anywhere. So they're not going anywhere now. Um, we've got the sheds coming on the... The luxury huts, you mean? The luxury huts <laughs> coming on Yeah, there. so the shooting sheds and the office and everything is going up. Uh, 13th, 14th and 15th of February and as Gareth alluded to before we started filming the 14th is Valentine's Day I won't be home I will be going looking at the huts going in because I can't wait um, yeah. this is going to kill him yeah it's good the stuff we've had on is, is good isn't it it's been going well yeah, it's, it's, it's just such a transformation um, even like he's done like a little road down to the car park and things like that um, we we got the um the, the, the ground, uh, what's it called, the MOT stuff? Yeah, so crushing runs going down. Basically, we need to put a hard stand in for the huts to sit on just for the level. Obviously, you don't want to be shooting off a, a bench and realise that the shed's wonky. Um, so we've, the car park's getting lead, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so the car park's getting a uh, crushing run put on it, the driveway, the same, the pathways, and then obviously the hard standing for the, the huts to sit on. And then once that's done and the, the huts are in place, we can start doing things like electricals, getting the CCTV in place, getting them set out right, obviously putting the targets out at various distances and different heights and stuff so we can make it and tires. fun for people, can't we? Tyres, yeah, we've got a load of tyres going up there as well to act as a bit of a windbreak, stopping any crosswinds ripping across. Thank you to Labitas Tyres for yes. them. Yes. <laughs> um, helping us out there. Yes, yeah, a lot going on. It's been mad trying to juggle everything and then obviously do the shop, Gareth with his job, and then try and make sure we get content out for you guys because we were conscious, weren't we, that we hadn't done anything. Yeah, um, we, we, we were getting a few comments from people, my friends, is uh, saying when's the next video. So, But that's nice that people want to know when the next one is because it means that you guys are enjoying what we're doing. And um, like I said, we will get the consistency back that we had before. It's just that for the last 12, 13 days, we've been under mile an hour and being pulled in about eight or nine different directions. Um, we've got some new content coming as well. Um, we we have had, we've been contacted by a customer, uh, not a customer, uh, a viewer, a subscriber has contacted us and they've got um, an airlogic genesis, mm. um, which is obviously um, a fixed uh, single stroke pneumatic. Um, and, and that's to me that's one of the things that we've missed here because we've done a show on springers and we've done a show on PCPs and I wanted to do a show on the middle bit which is obviously um, single stroke pneumatics yeah. um, so anyone who's got like a HW45 or something like that they know exactly what I mean it's just one pump and then you can fire um, and there's a few out there there's Airlogic Genesis there's a few of us out there that I want to put together and just show you guys because th there was a bit of a phase Nobody used them, but they didn't pass on because sticking a bottle on the end, pumping it up, and uh, away you go, you know, 100 yeah. shots. No one wants to be cocking a rifle, but they are a, a way of having a controlled, a totally um, recoil-free rifle, you know, uh, one stroke, and, and when you fire, it's exactly like a PCP, so yeah. we're going to do something on them. Yeah. Uh, also got see. Ivan video coming up, aren't we? We're going to yeah. go and see Mr Hancock, Mr Venom. Yeah, we've that's my fault. We we I need to book. Holiday. It's not. Uh, you all know Gareth works, but it's different for me. I've got the shop, and I can get one of the RFD servants to come in and cover the shop if I need to. But for Gareth, he's full time work, so he's got to book his holidays and stuff. So we just it's hard trying to knit diaries together and make sure you haven't got family commitments and stuff. But we will go and see Ivan because it's an interview that I think we both definitely want to see. It is, and we've got a surprise when we go there as well because we're going a little bit further, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so we're not going to talk about that yet, but we're going to see a collection, and that's as much as I'm saying. And it's a um, big collection. <laughs> Massive. So, so that's, that's, we've been invited, 
And um, I might get a I, souvenir. I, I, I might bring tell, some. Of I will that. tell you, is it's where the skimmers came from. That that's so you can imagine what it's going to be like. So yeah, the standard of this collective stuff is insane, isn't it? Yeah. Like I said, hopefully, I might get a souvenir to come back with. That'd be nice. His paw should be nice. Yeah, we're not bringing that back. Um, yeah, so we hope you enjoyed this week's episode, guys. Like I said, can only apologise, you know, for uh, for having a bit of a delay in getting the next video out to you guys. Uh, we will try and get back to one every week. Because Hopefully, you like this one as well. Yeah, and it, please let us know in the comments if you like the kind of um, style of video, like the format we've done. Um, we were thinking about and. You, you can comment on this if you want, guys. We were thinking about doing a couple of leaderboards like Top Gear style, yeah. where we had like um, maybe a scopes and um, an air gun, like a, a Springer, and then a, a PCP. And we did like a comparison board on, and knock the, knock the top runner off when a new gun comes out or something like that. Yeah, so there's, there's loads of ideas about kicking that. about, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I think we say it every week. If you guys have got any ideas or any suggestions of what you'd like to see and any kind of formats that you want to see that we've maybe not done before, please leave in the comments and let us know, and we'll do our utmost to get them done. Um, but for now, I think that's it. Isn't it so please like, comment, share, um, get in touch, and, and subscribe. Yeah. There's loads of people watching. Haven't subscribed. It says like there's a percentage, something like seventy-two percent people watching. You'll have the subscribe police on you. Subscribed. Come on. <laughs> Cheers, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.